All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. And today we're gonna to take a look at the 2023 half new features inside of Photoshop. And strangely enough, a half year into it, we've actually got a lot of new stuff. One of my favorite things, which was the live gradient has been added. We have a new fill application, but everyone's focused on that generative fill that uses AI. I've used Firefly, I have access to it, and I've fiddled around with the generative AI inside of the beta application. And let me stress this, it's only available in beta. What we're looking at here is not a beta, it's the new version. It works, but it's not as great as all these people who are advertising for Adobe says it is. The images just don't look that good. If you've used Mid Journey and then you use Firefly, it is so far ahead of the Adobe at this point. And obviously as people are using it more, it's gonna get better. But right now I would not consider it a functional use inside Adobe Photoshop. So we're gonna skip that for today and take a look at the realistic things that people might actually use here. And the first one is this new contextual taskbar that we see right below this image. And we have select subject, as we can see. We have remove background. We have this little symbol, but it's just gonna take you to this. It doesn't do anything. We can move this bar around. So if we click on the three dots, it's gonna give us a hide this bar so we can remove it. Reset the bar so we can reset it or pin this bar to a specific uh, position, but you need to move it first before you would click on this. So if I wanted to move this, I could simply move it up here and I wanted it to stay there. Then I could go pin bar to that location. But for right now, we're not gonna do that. And I'll just move it right back down here to kind of where it was. All right, so let's take a look at what this can do. So we can simply click this. It's going to select our subject for us. And look, it's just a new location to select the subject. But once we get in that, we can modify that selection. We can inverse that selection. We can transform the selection. We can create a mask. We can create a new adjustment layer. We can fill that section and we can deselect. So it's an option and look, it's gonna be hard for me to get used to using because I've been using the other methods for so long but for new people as they come along, this might be something that's helpful. And you can move this anywhere around the window that you want to. Now, once we've made a selection, and in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just say that we've made a selection up here, you'll notice that the adjustments look a little bit different and you can set them up in a couple of different ways. Up here, we've got brightness contrast. We've got our levels, curves, and so on, just like we had before. But you can come up here and click this little hamburger menu, and it's now going to change the way that that looks, and it has the word next to it, which is good because as people are learning it, you don't have to guess what the symbol means. The word says it right next to you. And if there's more under it that you can't see, so you can scroll down and get the rest. We also have these new presets up here. And I will get rid of this selection first. So let's deselect this. So everything's uh, deselected. And if you come up here, you notice we've now got this new thing called adjustment presets, what never existed before. And if you hover over one, it will show you what that preset is gonna look like. I can go to the next one, hover over that, see what that one looks like. Go to the next one, the next one, go to the next one. Let's say we like this one. If I click it, it's going to create that preset in a folder, but with the layers, which is freaking awesome. So whatever they use to create the preset, it saves it in the individual layers. So it allows you to come back in and really control what you're doing. So I really like the way that that aspect of it has been integrated in, that it's just not creating the effect and it's not non-destructive, this making the non-destructive elements here so we can go in and change them. There are more adjustments, so you can click on more and you can see we've got 
some under landscape. We've got some photo repair ones. We've got some creative ones, some black and white ones, and some cinematic ones. So these are all presets. And just like before, any of these that you would want to hover over, it would show you what it's going to look like. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the new fill command. And it's actually called remove something. Let's see, it's right here. It's called the remove tool, which is new. It, so to use the remove tool, you're going to come over here and you can see it says remove tool. It's this one right here with the little stars on it. So this is your spot healing brush, your remove tool and your healing brush. You're going to go ahead and click on that one. And basically what you're going to do is make the brush about the size of the item that you want to remove. You're going to simply paint over it and I'm going over this railing and it's going to remove that area. And it's doing a really good job compared to the older versions of this. You can see there's a little mistake there. We should fix it. But everywhere else, it did a pretty good job. It warped it a little bit here. Not perfect, but it's doing a good job. So let's come in here and we'll make this brush a little bit bigger. Say, hey, I want you to remove the shadow and the rock and we'll see how good of a job it does. It's a little blurred. It didn't create this area here, so you would have to work on that. So I'm gonna hit Command Z. And one thing that I would always tell somebody to do when they're using a tool like this is instead of just doing it on the background layer, go ahead and create a blank layer. And then you'll know up here it says Sample All Layers. So we're gonna actually tick this little box right there. And what that means is we're gonna create this fill on this blank layer, so if it messes something up, we can simply remove it. So then we're gonna come on here, we'll do the same thing, but this time it's gonna be on its own layer and that makes it non-destructive versus doing it on the original background. So you can say, remove that area a little bit. It looks okay, we need to go over this area a little bit again, but now it's on its own layer. So if we wanna fix that, we can fix that. So I can come back into here, turn this on, make this brush a little smaller and let's get this little bit that it missed. And you can see, yeah, that looks a little bit better. We still don't have that texture that it did right here. And we're gonna really give it a difficult one to try here. So I've got this picture that I've used a million times. We're gonna see how well if we try to remove this whole person, because this has angles and textures and we'll see what it does. So we'll create that new black blank layer, sample all layers, and we'll come in here and let's remove this woman in this wedding dress from this really complicated background. This is really gonna give us an idea of how well this works because this would not have turned out good before. Okay, so it did an okay job. I'd done this before and it actually turned out better because this was a straight line. It didn't have this weird indent thing that it tried to create here. And this guy's kind of warped and the lines aren't working together or fitting together that perfect. So let's go ahead and give it one more try and see if it works a little bit better the second time. And whenever you're working with something in Photoshop, if you do something once and it doesn't work perfect, just hit Command Z and undo it. So let's see if it does a little bit better job this time. Yeah, so that time it did a whole lot better job. It's straighter here, it's straighter here, and this area looks a little bit good. So is it perfect? Absolutely not, but does it do a pretty good job? Look, you really need to, when you're taking photos, pay attention to what you're doing so you don't have to do stuff like this. But I think in general, for most removal of some simple objects, this is gonna end up working pretty good. Now the last thing is called a linear gradient. So what I'll do is we'll just go ahead and delete this. And what I'm gonna do is create a curves adjustment layer where we're gonna make image brighter so you can see what's going on. And we're gonna click over here in this mask over here cause we're gonna say we wanna apply a gradient. So this adjustment kind of fades from 100% to zero. So we'll come on over and we're gonna pick our gradient tool. And then I'm just going to, notice we've got black to white, which is I want, 
and rectangle gradient. And we're just going to simply put this in. And what you can see is before it would have just applied it, but now it's actually leaving that gradient on your screen. So you can live edit it. Before you would do it, and if it didn't work perfect, then you'd have to do another one and another one. But this, you can just move it around. And as you're moving it around, you see what it's doing. So I can kind of control that midpoint and that far point. And so remember, white is showing the adjustment, so it's making it brighter and dark is not applying it. So if I wanted it to go right to the middle of her, I wanted to brighten up this side a little bit, but I didn't want to brighten up this side. I can apply that gradient which looks like this in the image. And we see that live and that is the new live gradient. And that's it for the new update for Adobe Photoshop 2023 and a half. Hey, if there's any of these new techniques that you'd like to see a specific video on how you would use them, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.